Have you ever wondered how to go about writing a newspaper or a website article for your GCSE exams? Maybe you're not entirely sure how to approach this issue? Well, I made this video as a way to explain and to show that actually when it comes to writing a newspaper or a website article, it need not be too complicated. Now, as you can see behind me, I've created a mind map which basically breaks down all the different components that go into writing a newspaper or a website article. Now, the reason why I have put newspaper and website together is because when it comes to how you write these articles and also the aims of these both of these types of articles, they're actually addressed to an external audience you are competing amongst other newspapers or amongst other websites so when it comes to your approach in how to structure it it should be quite similar now when it comes to how to begin this I would suggest of course always start off with the headline so for example if you think of any broadsheet newspaper such as for instance the Guardian newspaper or even any website or any blog they tend to always have a website or rather they tend to always have a headline because these headlines are supposed to firstly uh, summarize the main issue so for example when you're thinking about the statement that you're answering that's the key words within that statement and secondly they're supposed to be really captivating really eye grabbing and this in many ways is what you use to attract your audience's attention now I've suggested you should have your headlines always as a rhetorical question that's the easiest way to go about it now when you have a statement to answer and you have to write a website or a newspaper article around this statement I would suggest highlighting the keywords from the statement so for instance you could get a question around the statement climate change is not a big deal write an article either for a website or a newspaper whether you agree or not now the keywords within this question are climate change not a big deal so how to change that into a rhetorical question for your headline could be is climate change a big deal now I would suggest for your headline it should have no more than five or six words your headline should not be as long as a sentence it needs to be eye-catching attention grabbing and I would also suggest writing it in capital letters now after your headline you move on to the first paragraph now one thing you have to remember when it comes to newspaper or website articles they are not standard essays so you do not stand start it off with a standard introduction such as in this article i will begin with this or i will talk about this issue no it's supposed to be eye-catching it's supposed to be attention grabbing so i would suggest maybe your first sentence could be the question around keyword is a perennial issue now going back to my example of climate change it could be the question around climate change is a perennial issue that could be a way to start it off and then you go into your viewpoint which side of the argument do you stand on whether you agree or disagree and always of course when it comes to this kind of article you're always talking directly to an audience so you need to have a direct address then afterwards when you have your first paragraph and you've summarized the side of the argument that you stand on so for instance let's say if we go back to the example of climate change you maybe disagree that actually it is a big deal you make that clear in your first paragraph and then you talk about all the reasons and you summarize that however after your first paragraph you go to your first subheading now keep your subheading brief and the reason why you need a subheading when you're thinking about newspapers or website article is to break up the article on the page to make it easier for your reader to read through it now in your subheading always keep it brief and preview what you're going to discuss so for example going back to my example of climate change the first um the first paragraph you've introduced the issue and you've said that you actually believe that it's a big deal and then your subheading could be uh, uh climate change key for our world right because your next paragraph will be why it's really really important why it could um cause to the destruction of the planet why for instance um climate change is causing for instance um ecosystems vast ecosystems to die off this is going to impact our food chain and ultimately us right so in your subheading you have something really brief but it's a preview of what you're going to discuss now in your second paragraph you first give your first reason i believe climate change is important because of this it's critical for our world for instance then you can give a statistic now of course you're going to get a question on anything so you can't really learn all the statistics possible um so you in this instance the examiner will know this and they will know that you don't necessarily know statistics specific to the question however the reason why you're supposed to include statistics and you just make up the statistic make sure it's not crazy so for example a thousand percent of people believe this that's not necessarily a realistic statistic it could be for instance um 75 percent of people actually see climate change as a really important issue that could be a believable ish statistic now the reason why you use this is because when you're thinking about writing compelling arguments 
to convince people of course what you want to show is an appreciation of the value of statistics and that's why you're including it in your article in addition also use things that make your article more compelling to your reader so things like repetition things like hyperbole over exaggeration then after you're done with your second paragraph you then move on to your third paragraph now in your third paragraph you outline your second reason so the second reason why i think climate change is, is important is because of xyz then you can give an anecdote so for example you can make or give a really specific example so um jimmy who lives in new zealand actually lost his home because of really terrible weather which was not typical of the year of the time so for instance that could be an example of why climate change is terrible you're given an anecdote something that's really really specific something that's really relatable to one individual you can also end with a rhetorical question so of course rhetorical questions are really useful because they are designed to convince your reader into thinking and into questioning oh this is really interesting why is why has this happened then after your third paragraph you move on to your fourth paragraph and this is your third reason uh, supporting your viewpoint and in this paragraph you can talk about repetition and you can add another statistic another fake statistic so for example according to the University of Cambridge XYZ happened with regards to um, climate change then after you've had your fourth paragraph and you've argued for your perspective I would suggest having your second subheading and this subheading gives a preview of now your counter arguments always remember when you're giving argument questions you should always balance the argument you don't only show your perspective you also have to consider why some people will disagree with you so your subheading could be a preview of the counter arguments and then so for example the subheading could be why climate change may still not be a big deal that could be a subheading and then you can go into your fifth paragraph which is your first and second counter argument so as you can see here you've got one two three arguments for your perspective now you want to balance it but not balance it too perfectly you can give two reasons why people might disagree with you and then you can then add another statistic so another counterbalancing statistic and then you can give another anecdote as to why for example Sarah actually uh, lives in this part of the world she is experiencing climate change but actually she doesn't see it as a massive change to her environment that could be a counter argument and then you can also use the rule of three so rule of three always means for instance um, men women and children might think this um, boys girls and children so rule of three are any three words or three ideas that are somehow related and again this is a persuasive technique now you finish off your final paragraph with refuting these counter arguments so after considering these counter arguments i still believe that climate change is a really important issue something like that and then you reiterate your argument and then you close but do not use words such as to conclude i think this you are not writing an essay you're writing a newspaper article or website article so it has to be compelling it has to be engaging you can end off with saying for instance even if we uh, think that climate change isn't that much of a big deal because we don't necessarily personally have an experience of it, we still need to change things. Otherwise, one day we will suffer too. Something like that as an ending point. Because always remember, when it comes to website or newspaper article, it's meant to inform, but equally the secondary aspect of it is to entertain. So make sure you bear this in mind. And of course, when it comes to this mind map, I've also made it a downloadable resource. So in case you miss anything, you can download it and then watch this video over again and make notes. So thank you so much for listening.